Hey, my name's Sean Sean. I sell art on SeanSean.co, and today we're going to react to Super Ray Dizzle. So Super Ray Dizzle is an artist on YouTube. I think she does a lot of product testing. Um, I'm not sure what her art is. I think maybe pouring. I'm not sure because most of her videos look like they're testing products, which is a great way to reach out to your audience. So let's go check out some of her videos. So just looking at her page right off the bat, if you look, um, you'll see she has a pretty good thumbnail game. Um, a lot of different varieties. She has her image in a lot of the thumbnails. It's just really strong way to reach out to your audience. Um, and they feel pretty consistent. So it's pretty good uh, thumbnail art. So let's check out her first video. First video is buying my art supplies blindfolded. Hmm. Hey guys, it's Ray here. Welcome back to my channel. So as you guys know, I did a video where I picked out all of my art supplies completely blindfolded and I made a drawing from that. I have a feeling this one is green. So I'm gonna throw this one in. And since I made that video, it's been so highly requested that I do that exact same thing, except buy my supplies. So yeah, as the title states, we're gonna go in. I have my buddy here. And yeah, I'm gonna buy my art supplies completely blindfolded. So right at the bat, you see she immediately has kind of the zoom effect <laughs> in her video to make that kind of like eye popping and really trigger the emotions in the brain. So if you do kind of, you're he jumping and swinging around and moving the camera a lot your brain will be like what the heck is going on and it'll pay attention more even if you don't want to so it's just kind of a nice way to kind of tr trigger the audience to pay attention we'll go back forward a little bit oh this one feels nice i feel like this one's watercolor <laughs> is this watercolor I bet this one's the black paper. Cause you know how they have like the black paper? I feel like this one's the black tone. Cause I saw a bunch of it the other day. Ooh, this one feels nice. Is this the same one? I feel mm. like this one's the same one. No, it's not. And the cover came off. Oh, the cover? Yeah. Why does it have a cover? Okay, well I have no idea what's going on. So I'm gonna try to put it back. Well, and by the way guys, we're gonna clean up afterwards. Okay, so that's kind of silly. Let's go on to the next section. I think this one is. Like, I kind of have it memorized. Um, this one, I have a feeling this is a pink. Maybe like a orange. You know, let's just like get the whole rainbow. So got a white. So that's smart. <laughs> is this one even close to white? No. <laughs> okay. You know, just to be safe, I better get like a pack of pencils too. Okay, I gotta use like my spidey senses, you know? Like my spidey senses are tingling. <laughs> Jesse, where are you? Hey, so this is a pretty humorous video. What the heck is with the damn focus? Oh my god, my focus is going crazy. I don't know what happened. Sorry about that, guys. But it's uh, pretty humorous. He's just wandering around, stumbling around, trying to buy art supplies. It's a really funny kind of video. You could obviously easily make this an art store with a friend. So let's keep going ahead. I got colored pencils, right? Yes. Oh, wow. I'm going to be spending so much money. More money than I ever thought. All right, so let's go ahead. Less white than the ones that I use. So, yeah. Why don't we test these babies out right now? So we'll go ahead and do a swatchity, swatchity. Which, I mean, right off the bat, that swatch, ooh, she is not looking good. And I don't mean to be rude. Um, I use this from Dollar Tree. You can get two of them for $1. And right off the bat, you can definitely, definitely tell a difference between the two pens. Yeah, one actually paints. The one's ink, I think. Uh, oh, God, what are these? So she's going to open a whole bunch of stuff. Let's see if she actually gets to the painting here. First things first, I'm going to start off with a sketch. Of course, using just the regular Hobby Lobby brand number two pencils. This is okay Those to start pencils, with. By the way, they are so good. I was so surprised with how good they were. If you have a Hobby Lobby, I highly recommend picking them up because, man, they're good. 
So yeah, the next part of the process is drawing with the colored pencils, specifically the watercolor pencils that I got. So I want to say this is kind of a cool thing, but I think I would have forced them to only pick, say, colored pencils that are loose so that you really don't know what you're getting color-wise. If you just buy a package of colored pencils, of course it's going to be a matching set unless you get the all black ones. So I don't know if it's really living up to like, wow, shock value. I had to use purple and green and that's all the color I had, you know? <laughs> This is okay, let's skip ahead a little bit. Well, that's some crazy bright orange. All right, let's go to the next video. Kind of interesting video, kind of fun. Uh, just nice, light, silly. So this one is, I tried to, I tried the weirdest paint pouring video. Um, so this is kind of interesting. Uh, try to replicate someone else's style of work, kind of like the Bob Ross style video. So let's check this out. Consider today's video an investigative video because today, my friend, we are taking a deep dive look into the mysterious world of paint pouring. And I know initially speaking, it doesn't seem like there's much to paint pouring, like you literally just pour paint. <laughs> but over the past few years, as the paint pouring, paint pouring community has grown and grown and grown. All right, let's see what she's doing here. Okay, now I'm just gonna heat it up a little bit. Oh, it's beautiful. And basically what the torch is doing is it heats the silicone a little bit, making what's called cells in the painting. And just like that, you have one of the most basic techniques for paint pouring. And most people, I think when they think of paint pouring, they think of a simple technique like this. Um, but from this point forward in the video, the techniques that you are gonna see are, I would say, very- Let's just go ahead here. So I move my so this... back to the center. There we go. Doesn't that look absolutely incredible? Like the people who do this really, really have a knack for it because wow. So here we go, just gonna place it down. I hope this is enough. And I'm just gonna slowly pour it in. Just slowly go around like this. Okay, that should be good. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> So this one came out really, really cool. It kind of looks like ink. Not stains, bad. But it was very difficult to get the paint to like stay in a structured area like the original channel. All right, so let's go ahead. Whoa. So with this one, I basically want to create a suction to the canvas. That way nothing spills outside of it. So one hand is going to be putting pressure while the other one is slowly going to pour in. Okay, now I'm going to pull out the <laughs> Oh, it's working. Okay, now I'm going to lift up the cardboard. Bravo. Oh, oh, oh. Wow. oh wow. Ads right in the middle of it. Yeah, kind of interesting. That I've done today, this one by far stayed the most intact. So it is kind of an interesting thing with how she's doing all these different techniques, I'd say. Let's keep going. And so yeah, all of this right here is where the paper towel holder was. Go ahead a little bit. We're all over the place. Um, and I'm a little nervous about that, so we'll see how that goes. I'm gonna spread out the string evenly. All right, so now to pour in a circle. Oh, this is happening so quickly. So here's what it looks like. And I'm slowly gonna churn it while lifting it up at the same time. So here we go. Ooh. So now I'm gonna add in some black to the outer rim of the painting. Ooh, darlings. Ooh. All right, and now for the super messy part, which I'm actually excited for. I think this one's gonna work really nice. Yeah, that's super messy. <laughs> oh my God, this is so freaking difficult. 
<laughs> Dude, this one looks so different compared to all the other ones. That one's kind of cool. What kind of not perfect, but fun. Take to combine fluid art, mop, and spin art all at the same time. So I think it's a pretty cool uh, video. Let's go on to the next one. It is kind of interesting to exploring different art techniques with obviously not really knowing it herself. I think so. That's kind of fun. This next one is testing the first blue pigment in over 200 years. So let's check this out. This is the first blue pigment successfully invented in over 200 years. The music's it's really called Yemen Blue. And unbelievably, I got my hands on some and we're going to review it. Now, there are two things throughout history that the humankind has always had trouble finding. First one being aliens. Man, that would be the day. And the second thing is a blue pigment. It's surprisingly hard to find a blue pigment. Unlike red, yellow, brown, all of which are easy to find in nature, that's not the case for a vibrant bright <clears throat> blue color. And there's been a whole entire host of flops throughout history where people have tried to make blue pigments. Starting with the ancient Egyptians, they had Egyptian blue. It was used all throughout ancient Egypt and ancient Rome, just this beautiful, prolific light blue color. So I like this kind of like and historical course, background. During the Middle Ages, they were like, uh uh, we don't want any of that science devil magic around here. And they proceeded to either lose or destroy all instructions of Egyptian blue and how to make it forever. So let's go ahead a little bit. Tiny. Oh, it's magnetic. Oh, that's a really nice little touch. Now, like I said, right now, it's kind of difficult oh, to find these ads. Blue because it's just Killing so me. new, so rare, and just released. So from the seller that I purchased from, this little guy right here of authentic Yemen blue cost 45 bucks. Whoa, <laughs> 45 for paint. I have literally ever bought. <laughs> that's life. insane. And plus it's watercolor, which lasts a really, really, really long time. So I'm probably barely going to be able to even make a dent with how much of this that I'm going to use. Do you know what I mean? Now, my very first impression of it is that it looks a lot like ultramarine blue. So a really nice zoom effect. She's got a really tight shot. So kind of build up with the story and the background of blue. And then you go and finally, it builds up way up to the excitement of the pigment and you can see this is already five minutes in before the pigment really comes out so it's five minutes you have to wait you're like oh it's gonna go on so you got really great watch time doing that blue except it's a little less purpley like it's a little bit more of a neutral blue really really pretty stuff so let's go ahead and test this little guy out i love that i love how it just like falls <laughs> that is kind of cool It's a nice zoom shot so you can see the color. It'd be interesting compared to other blues. Wow, this color is like so insanely blue that I'm gonna have to, and I rarely do this on my channel, but I'm gonna have to take a picture, Photoshop it to what my eyes see. That way you at home can see what it looks like. It's hard to say if it's seen accurate or not because it's depending on the computer, right? So let's go ahead a little bit. So let's compare another blues, which is smart. As far as personal preferences go, I prefer the Prussian blue just because I, I like that color. But still, as far as like a perfect blue, Yidman blue is still way more blue. And then lastly, we have ultramarine blue, which I thought this one was going to be the most accurate, but we'll see. Well, it's, it's oh, yeah, cultural preference too. It's way more purple. So I actually do have one more dupe for you guys. And this one is actually kind of unexpected. I'm losing track of all the times I'm saying it. Like it doesn't even sound like a real word at this point. It sounds like fake. I don't know how to describe it. Having a blue crisis. So is she gonna paint it in blue? Okay. I would say the music is a little distracting. It's really loud. And then it goes soft, but I would probably reduce the music a little bit, but. This is a nice painting. So overall, I would say she has a really nice channel. She's doing a lot of product testing. So that's really smart because people are always curious about products, especially in the artist side. So they'd be like, oh, well, I got a new blue. So that's an awesome video if you can get your hands on it. 
the very first tester is going to be obviously you're going to get the most views compared to people that test that blue later so she was one of the first ones to test it so obviously that's super cool right um it's like that new black that comes out and it's super black and you see it you're like holy crap <laughs> like you can't even see it. it looks like you're looking at the night sky it's so dark um but yeah those are really cool videos to do like testing new products go a kind of a scavenger hunt in an art supply store just pick random supplies and put them together into a video i think this is a really fun video so she has a lot of fun um, side to the videos a lot of quirky different ideas not just your typical just painting tutorial but painting tutorial after painting tutorial kind of gets stale after a while um, she has a lot of music in the background sometimes a little loud i think i don't know if you should have it that loud but i mean if you're not talking you could probably crank up the music just kind of personal preference there she has a kind of a funny gamer chair it looks like in the background I don't know if that looks really like a art chair per se. It kind of looks more like a gamer chair. So I don't know if that's on brand per se. She has a lot of nice background in, she has like art on the wall and a little decoration. So very cutesy kind of setup for the background. Yeah, it's overall, and she's doing a lot of makeup and stuff to kind of doll herself up for the painting, which is kind of natural. It looks like she's putting on a lot of makeup, like foundation, which is you know, not good for your skin which yeah it's kind of self-reinforcing you know her issues with her skin by putting foundation it's obviously your skin can't breathe so it gets worse and worse and worse but it's hard sometimes when you have you know skin issues to deal with that you know i'm sure she's doing the best she can but yeah it's a pretty good artist i think as far as developing really creative video ideas so she's obviously getting really great view count for five hundred thousand just on this one blue and it came out literally 10 days ago so that's just amazing you get that many views in a single video most people just get a couple of 20 30 views because there's like i don't know like hundreds and hundreds of art videos that come out every week if not every day so it's just amazing you can even have that reach so she's really found a really cool niche of testing products and kind of making a fun video great editing style i'd say and yeah go check her out uh, at least for the product testing it's pretty cool and hope to see you in the next video thanks for watching guys